If it's true that heaven's open Let my heart be open too I want to feel the wind blowing Be more sensitive to you I don't want to miss the stirring I want to hold the mystery Oh, cause I'm convinced you're moving I want to follow where you lead yeah. So let it be Good evening. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm Bill Bethlehem, the lay leader at Calvary United Methodist Church in Stewart Strat, Virginia. And tonight is the last of our fall season vespers, harvesting the fruit. It's been centered around the fruit of the Spirit. And I hope this time together has provided an opportunity for you to pause and give thanks for the day that has just passed and also to make an evening sacrifice of praise to God. A big thank you to Mary Jo Ramsey Smith, our worship music leader, who has led us in song every week. And she did it all from New Mexico. Thank you, Mary Jo. You are a blessing. Thank you to all of our guests who shared their thoughts and reflections. You all helped us stay connected through this season. As we gather together one last time, I hope you will feel relaxed and thankful and be ready to start your nighttime rest. Tonight, our focus is self-control. So let's begin. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us. Come, Holy Breath, live in us. Come, Holy Wind, move through us and cause the fruit of your Spirit to ripen in our lives. Our responsive scripture reading for tonight is Psalm 37, verses 7 through 11. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. Written by Kelly Willard, Make Me a Servant is written as a prayer. The lyrics of the song Ask God to make us a servant who is humble and meek, lifting up those who are weak. Join Mary Jo in this simple song of prayer as she leads us. It's from the faith we sing, number 2176, Make Me a Servant.
As we close out our study of the fruit of the Spirit, our scripture is from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 13. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, He has given us His very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. I saw a picture the other day of a dog sitting calmly. The interesting thing about the picture was that there was a dog treat on the nose of the dog. But the dog didn't move. It just sat there, looking at its master, waiting for the command that it was all right to eat the snack. Clearly, the dog was showing self-control. Yes, it was just a trick that the dog was trained to perform, but maybe that's the lesson. Maintain self-control. Wait to be obedient. And listen for the command from the master because there's a treat in the end for you. Self-control may be one of the most important fruits to possess, even if it's listed last. Self-control helps us to resist temptation. It guides our decision, and it correlates how we should show the other fruits in our lives. For example, the gift of forbearance or patience requires self-control. Proverbs 14.29 says, Whoever is patience has great understanding but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Our sinful nature leads us to give in to our temper, but we are called to rise above that and show patience. Self-control can be applied to all of the fruits of the Spirit in the same way it is applied to forbearance or patience. Displaying self-control is often a matter of responding rather than reacting. Most of the time, we all just react to stuff. A long time ago, I was a radio broadcast engineer, and when I first started, I needed to learn how to not react when facing a problem. When something in the transmitter failed and the station was off the air, my first reaction back then was, oh my goodness, I've got to get this thing fixed, we're off the air. But my mentor taught me that I would never be able to troubleshoot effectively if I was emotionally reacting instead of systematically responding to the problem. When we react to a situation, we let our emotions take control. In relationships, we are more likely to become defensive and say hurtful things. Responding, however, involves developing a thoughtful response that is guided by reason more than emotions. Fortunately, as Christians, our responses to situations are to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ gives us the perfect example of self-control because he lived a sinless life and possessed every fruit of the Spirit. Jesus demonstrated self-control because he was sent to earth to carry out God's will. In Matthew 26, 53 and 54, Jesus says, Do you think I cannot call on my Father? He will not at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? I think many of us, would have just called down the angels. But Jesus knew what he was sent to earth to do. And despite his own fears revealed in his prayers in the garden, he demonstrated self-control in submitting to God's perfect plan. 
Jesus was to live a perfect life in order to set an example for us. And in the end, He died for our sins so that we may have eternal life. Without the self-control of Jesus, we would face death as the punishment of our sin. We are all filled with God. We are created in God's image. And we are to help bring about God's desire for a heaven on earth. We are to love others and care for others. Sometimes that task is hard. We are bombarded with consumer messages that urge us to indulge in ourselves. And we are pushed to conform to the ways and things of this world. We need the fruit of self-control so we can go about the work of God. God knows that. So God gave us the tool. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. With the Holy Spirit inside us, we are able to possess self-control and demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. As a result, we can live in a way that is not only honorable to God, but helps contribute to God's plan of heaven here on earth. So as an engineer, I learned to take a deep breath, pause and think about the problem I was facing, and then respond to what the equipment was doing and not doing, what the equipment was telling me. I have learned to transfer those skills and adjust them when relating to people. Not that people need to be fixed, but by listening and caring for my brother or sister, I can show self-control and make sure my response always begins with love. So the next time you're in a tough situation, remember Jesus and the perfect example He gave us of how to live. While it may seem challenging to demonstrate self-control, the reward in the end is pretty great. Living in the fruit of the Spirit means you are aware of the influence of the Holy Spirit. As a child of God, you'll want to shape your life around the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Someone who walks in the Spirit patterns his or her life after Jesus Christ. It is a way of faith. If we live by the fruit of the Spirit, we constantly keep our sights on the Lord. Paul says if we live in the Spirit, we have to keep in step with the Spirit. We have to learn how to abandon our bad habits and learn new ones. Through this Spirit, Jesus makes us into people who love God and love others. We are to be diligent in prayer, studying Scripture, attending worship services, serving and caring for others, and fellowshipping with other Christians. We should nurture our relationship with God, making it the priority of our lives. And we must work every single day to live by every single fruit that God has called us to bear. It is the hard work of the growing season. Growing in the fruit of the Spirit is expected in a child of God. And as we grow, we develop our witness to others what the faith and the life of a Christian looks like. So I challenge you to make every effort on a daily basis to serve Jesus and others. Live by the fruit of the Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in your daily walk. Walk with Jesus, not the world, and rejoice in the harvest in the end. Join me now for our good night prayer. Our prayer has been the same for each Vesper service. It should be familiar to you by now. Feel free to continue to use it as a good night prayer in your life and allow it to continue to grow within you. Let us pray together. God, as we ask that the fruit of your Spirit may grow into us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. As we would grow with you, may we bring forth fruit that is pleasing to you. As we take our rest tonight, forgive us for the ways we have fallen short, and strengthen us to do better when we wake. Amen. Thank you for joining these Harvest Time Evening Vespers. To stay up to date and never miss a video that we premiere, be sure to click the subscribe button on our Calvary UMC YouTube page or the follow button on our Calvary UMC Facebook page. Again, thank you, God bless you, and have a very good night.
If it's true that heaven's open Let my heart be open too I want to feel the wind blowing Be more sensitive to you I don't want to miss the story I want to hold the mystery Oh, cause I'm convinced you're moving I want to follow where you lead yeah. So let it be Spacious